1970, you worked on a production called The Andersonville Trial. Yes. George C. Scott yes. was the director, mm -hmm. first time he ever directed. Yes. What kind of an experience was that for you? That was a great experience because we found out that we're third cousins. Really? Yes. The third cousin of George yes. C. Scott? Yes. How did, how did you? <clears throat> well, we were standing on the set uh, of Andersonville Trial. That was KCET. Again, that was a full stage. I broke all you the fire laws. Tell the, the people who are watching that KCET is a public television station. Yes, it is. Angeles. Yes. And they were running, uh, at that time, Hollywood Playhouse. Series. Lewis Friedman is the producer. Yes, he was. And uh, it was all professional companies. Uh, and the performers and the directors, even the painters and the art directors, wanted to go to KCET to work on these pictures because they realized that they would be surrounded by professional people. And we had cast, the cast alone for Andersonville Trial, if you read down that cast, it's a all-male cast. William Shatner? Absolutely. Jack Cassidy. Buddy Epson? Yes. Uh, Cameron Mitchell? Martin Sheen? Yes. They, every, everybody turned in a sterling performance because they were surrounded by their peers. And there was time taken out of rehearsal many times because if somebody got up, uh, Cameron Mitchell got up and gave a, his part, which was a big soliloquy that he had to say, and when he sat down, the rest of his peers, the rest of the performers applauded just because they wanted to because it was, a, as I say, a sterling performance out of all of them. They were all excellent. Now, we know George C. Scott is a, is a splendid actor. Yes. What kind of director? Well, I, wanted, I must take time to tell you the first day he walked in the control room. He had never directed a television show. He, if anything, he'd done little theater stuff, in, maybe in New York, but he'd never directed. I met him in his hotel the morning that we were to take him to the studio. He had just gotten in from some kind of a party for Patton, and I had seen the opening of Patton. And I tell you, I, this was a giant to me, never realizing that I was in some way related to him. Anyway, we took him to the studio. Lewis Friedman opened up the door to the, the big studio. It was on 13, 13 Vine at that time. And now, George, here's where you will sit. And those are your five monitors, your previews and your, your four cameras here. Uh, yep. That's all he said, yep. Okay, your, your assistant director will sit here next to you, the script. Yep. Uh, your video, your, t your TD will sit here. Yep. Your audio director will be behind the glass over there. Yep. Now, you got a view to this floor through here, through the window. You got any questions, George? Nope. That was it. Next day he started rehearsals. Now, he's known to be a tough man. Was he a tough man as a director? He, that's one of the reasons why that cast was on their toes, because of his reputation. He never lost his temper, never. He was a man that you could go to. He, he could actually read drawings. That surprised me, because I, I know very experienced directors today that can't read drawings. You take them a ground plan, they don't know what you've got in your hand. But George did. So you were comparing notes, and you found out that you were elated? Yeah, he, we, it was a, a lunch break, or a, a, a break schedule. And we were in the, standing in the courtroom there, because the entire set was a courtroom. And he said, uh, where are you folks from? And I said, well, I, uh, my father was originally uh, from uh, Virginia, and my mother was from West Virginia, and my father was uh, third generation Scotland. He said, we're in Virginia. And I said, Scott County? Oh, well, that's where my folks are from. And uh, I said, by the way, uh, 
the books tell me that my great great grandfather's name was George C. Scott. And uh, what was his middle name? And I said, I don't know, but my father's name is Claude S. Scott. And he says, Oh, that's interesting. I've got a brother that, by the name of Spencer Scott. So we got to comparing notes here, and we find out that with the same family, he wanted to know what part of the family was wiped out in the Civil War, and I told him as far as the books were telling us that most of my family was, my forebears were wiped out in the Battle of Shiloh. He says, that's where mine was.